Ever heard of Fordlandia? Henry Ford is remembered as a great American industrialist for the Model T and the assembly line that created it. In the 1920s, riding high on these successes, Ford arrived in Brazil with a bold plan to build an egotistically named town in the Amazon to harvest rubber modeled after American company towns. Here it is today. It didn't go well. This is what happens with billionaires. Billionaires have lots of money, and so they do lots of things. But many of those things fail. At this point, we've all realized that Elon Musk is a flawed billionaire, just like the rest of them. The Model 3 is his Model T, and it's pretty clear that he's having his Ford Landier moment with his butchering of the blue bird. Twitter is an algorithmically driven torture machine, popular with intellectuals that somewhat disproves that they have any intellect at all. I'm too smart to be writing a compelling video script right now. I'm too busy tapping out a crap 200 character version of it in an argument with a God-fearing pink supremacist furry porn artist. But whatever, it's pretty clear that the internet's most masochistic community is on a sinking ship and looking to make landfall elsewhere. I think when he decided to name it X was when it was obvious that even Twitter's hilariously all talk, no action user base would finally bounce off the boat. People kind of hate this guy and him renaming it just forces people to log in to www.isuckelon.cock. I'm not sure when the tipping point will occur and it could well tip into some niche of Musk fans, but it's dig day is coming. Twitter is sustained by a network effect. It's like watching a cluster of people not managing to make their way past the entrance of a venue. Everyone keeps clustering in the conversational gravity of some people they like, but at some point, maybe some snacks arrive or a charismatic character makes a move and the group migrates into the space. Sensing the coming collapse, Twitter's twits have been casting their eyes around for some alternative platform to tell everyone that all my detractors are wrong, the points I make in my videos are 110% valid. You sound fun. I am almost certainly more fun than anybody you know. I just don't accept mediocrity. The first plate of snacks they aspirationally fluttered to was Mastodon, and they had the same experience I did when I tried it several years ago. Okay, so I need to choose a server. Well, which one's the right one with my friends in it? Am I locking myself in here? All right, well, so who's on here? No one. All right, well, fuck that. Quit, delete app, back to eating birdseed. Some people went over to Reddit, but Reddit has its own problems right now more corporation pissing off the users shit. Also, Twitter's users don't like being downvoted. They like their toilet thoughts being algorithmically shoved into people's faces, not filtered by the so-called wisdom of crowds. Then Zuck showed up with Twittergram and Dorsey showed up with Twitter too. Wow, this time the menu goes like this, not like this. So I logged into Twitter too and I recognized something from Mastodon the choose a server thing. Because I'd gone through the whole bunch of servers thing with Mastodon, this time it wasn't as off-putting. After I logged in, literally the first thing I saw was a person saying, why wouldn't I just use Mastodon? And I thought, yeah, I don't know who runs Mastodon, but I'd kind of like to see a new space for public discourse that wasn't a concoction of the same old bags of coke. What is Mastodon? I should look at that again, because obviously the multiple server thing is really important if they're making us go through that hassle. Maybe I judged them too harshly just because they were my introductory experience to a new technology. It's not like we're born into this world knowing what a hashtag or an email address is, but that stuff is really simple once you're used to it. So I went and logged into Mastodon, and straight away you notice this is a lot more mature and polished than Blue Sky. Using Blue Sky is like using those weird niche extremist versions of social networks. You can just feel the jank. It makes sense that Blue Sky would feel less polished. Mastodon has been around since 2016, and behind it is a German nonprofit funded by, well, me and thousands of others on Patreon. Patreon is a great way to fund things you want to see more of. The thing that weirded out the first wave of Twitter refugees was choosing the server which will host your login. So let me help you with that. Click social. That's it. Just use the social server. It's the official one that most people are on. You can still go visit all the other servers and engage with their stuff. You can move servers later if you want. The main thing to remember is, and this is important, listen closely. Who gives a fuck? 
type my name into the search box, or Reese, or Alec, type Montreal into the search box, click the thing, follow it. What is this? What is the word? What is the, how is the letters? Who cares? Do you need to know what .com means and how DNS works before you visit Pornhub? I can't possibly flick my bean with this much uncertainty in the air about network routing infrastructure. Yeah, it's not Twitter. That's why you're there, dummy. If you want Twitter, crack out the lube for the entry of Mr. Musk and head on over to just1x.com. It's functionally 95% Twitter and then people are confused about the 5% like someone is using TikTok with their phone held sideways. Everything is so sideways on this. Rotate your phone. Crisis averted. So that's about all you need to know, but I think it's good to explain why the little weird 5% is worth it. If anything in all this, the lack of curiosity about why something is not the same as other social media sites is disappointing because that little bit of weird has a lot of benefits. Benefits that are actually really exciting. This whole multiple servers thing is called a federated social network. Basically, Mastodon is individual proof by design. Some Elon can't take it over. Someone could be a weirdo with one server, but you can migrate your account to a different server. You're not trapped in some experiment to see how flammable $44 billion is. Your account's login and verification are held on this home server, and your posts and messages get broadcast from that server, like emails. The other servers all receive that, so everyone sees everyone's stuff. It's like living in a state. You're choosing the state that you live in, but you can move if you don't like the state or the way it's being run. Whereas on the old networks like Twitter, it's like you're living in a country with no states. You're stuck with no sanctuary if the sky starts to fall. Better yet, your state is highly autonomous. It can secede from the union and choose which other states to interact with, which broadcasts to turn into, letting you admit whatever servers you want to your party. Don't like the official app? Download a different one. Want an algorithm that challenges you and triggers you and makes you mad? You can make that happen if you want. All this is cool, but the big thing that makes me excited about this federated system is that it's not just a Twitter replacement. It's part of a pivotal change in the internet spawned by ActivityPub, a decentralized social networking protocol created by the W3C. If you did web development ever, you'll know this entity. It's about as legit as anything can be on the internet. Like HTTP, HTML, these guys built most of your address bar. It's the international standards organization for the internet. The fact that Blue Sky didn't use this protocol is kind of so typical of these companies. It's like the lightning cable while everyone else is using USB-C. Fuck you, Apple, and your shitty plug. And fuck you, Blue Sky, and your reinvention of a wheel. Use the standard, you egotistical All Canada. Even Zuck is at least wiring into it. So this new internet plumbing is getting a huge supply of new users from Mastodon and has massive potential. The internet's getting this opportunity to reinvent itself and kind of reset things, a new breath of life. People are creating YouTube replacements, Instagram replacements, Reddit replacements, girlfriend replacements, probably. Mastodon is like people getting their AOL or Yahoo account back in the day. It's just the first step in a new era. Everyone entering it through an account on one of these activity pub services adds value to the whole ecosystem. During the cryptocurrency booms, people kept talking about Web3, this decentralized internet. Blockchains and cryptocurrencies dominated the public discussion about it. Crypto bros would slur through their seventh pint, well actually we don't know what real thing is going to shake out of all of this yet. It's probably this. Clearly, it's the decentralized internet. People were so excited about decentralized money for obvious reasons that they missed decentralized everything other than money. I mean, I like money, you probably like money, but I also like the things I do with the money. Like right now, you are watching a video, a thing that is neither sending or receiving money. What if this video was hosted on PeerTube? What's that? It's been on PeerTube for a week, along with a bunch of other videos? Why not? Any YouTuber will tell you, we generally like the platform, but it's the only thing we have. And Elon could buy YouTube tomorrow, and unlike Mastodon, we couldn't just pack up our accounts and move elsewhere. Oh, and PeerTube accounts are integrated into Mastodon. In fact, anything on ActivityPub can be, which creates a potentially universal social network. 
So Mastodon is an open source nonprofit, and I'm sure the twats of Twitter will go, hmm, the founder has too much control over it, or the protocol is exposed to DOS attack. For the first time since the Firefox and Wikipedia days, two successful things that still exist, we're getting given a shot at a open, less corporate walled garden sort of internet, and people are like, nah, I think I'm gonna go with a billionaire who probably mixes teen semen into his parish to extend his life, or the one who's literally trying to conquer Mars, or Lieutenant Commander Dickwad who wants to have a televised fight with him, or so, just these guys. Have people totally lost their ability to weigh alternatives? People are just constantly walking off the edge of a cliff because the path has a puddle in it. The slow exodus from Twitter to other platforms is like watching a bunch of serfs shuffling out of a textile mill that's on fire and into the neighboring textile mill owned by the billionaire's buddy instead of the workers' cooperative. Why? Especially when it's worse. Sometimes the egotistical billionaire is the only option. There isn't an open source electric car. So yeah, you have to buy a Muskmobile, but you don't have to use his shitty website when a better one exists that is run by a non-profit, fully open source and on an open standard. This time you actually get to choose, not the status quo. Why the fuck would you use Blue Sky? Oh, I got an invite code. What, is that all it takes? Jack Dorsey hands you ticket number 612,000 and you're like, oh boy, I'm Jack's buddy. But you don't know Jack. We have a potentially once in a lifetime chance to break the ever tightening corporate grip on the internet. Microblogging isn't a particularly healthy activity. It's like an internet locker that we all slam each other against forever and ever. If you're gonna do something so foolish, might as well be doing it to help spawn a new internet. To quit Twitter and join Threads or Blue Sky is the move of a person who doesn't have principles. It's just trendy to hate Elon Musk. Why not stop chasing likes and just type out your thoughts on Mastodon for a while? Be part of getting the conversation started there. For me personally, now that it exists, Mastodon or a similar open system, when it's a reasonable equivalent, that's where I'll exclusively be from here out. I don't like microblogging that much anyway, so farewell Twitter, you dirty bird. If the sky starts to fall. Oh, paintbrush. How you test me. Fuck you, Apple, and your shitty plug that the EU had to regulate you into fixing. Oh, that's USB-C. <laughs> there isn't an open source electric car. Please don't write comments about how there is. There probably is. It's it's not a it's not a fucking fuck fuck you if you write that comment. No, write that comment and increase engagement. Hmm. See, Nick, I'm being manipulated by the algorithm.